Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. I'm Nick. Today I'm talking about one of my favorite reissue labels, Music on Vinyl. There's a bunch of links down below. Make sure you go check them out. There's links for The Vinyl Den Facebook group, for our merch page, for the Spotify and Apple Music weekly playlist that we put together, and also the Patreon page. Make sure you go check all that out. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me all a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I release new episodes. So I've been a big fan of music on vinyl for the last several years at least. And uh, I think last time I looked on Discogs, I think I had about 40 MOV releases in my collection. Just a bunch of great stuff, hard to find stuff, stuff that had been out of print for years and years or stuff that had never been printed, especially when it comes to like 90s uh, albums. They've done a great job of kind of finding a lot of those hidden gems from the 90s and pressing them on vinyl for the, for the first time, really. But uh, a little bit about music on vinyl. They started back in 2009. I think their first pressing was in 2010. Everything is pressed at uh, Record Industry in the Netherlands. That's where the MOV home base is. And uh, they do everything in-house, from cutting the lacquers all the way through to packaging the product and, and, and shipping it out. But I will say of the 40 MOV releases I have, like I said, they all sound great. I don't have a sound quality issue with any of these pressings. You know, I, I don't think I've had any kind of quality control issues, which is funny because that's kind of what everyone complains about over the last few years is how bad quality control is. It seems like a record industry in the Netherlands does a great job top notch with all that. So the question always seems to kind of pop up about how MOV sources of music. Is it from an analog source? Are they from digital sources? Are they cutting records from CDs? To the point where MOV, if you go on their question and answer page, actually has it all kind of laid out. Like I said, their whole process is on there. But specific to how they master music. And if you go on there, it says, what masters do you use? It says, we use the best audio available to cut our records. We receive and use different kinds of masters, analog tapes, original metal parts, lacquers cut from analog tapes, and high-res digital files, 192, 96 kilohertz, 24-bit. Music on vinyl does not use CDs as masters. And I think if you go back and listen to any of these MOV releases, you know, are they, you know, top-end audiophile releases? No, but they're definitely not cut from CD. These sound really great. And like I said, of the 40 albums I have, I don't have a single quality control or audio issue with any of these releases. And I do have some releases that you could tell are cut from CD. A couple of bootlegs I have, uh, you know, just don't sound all that great. You know, that's kind of cool to have them on vinyl, and I did got them for a really good price. So it really doesn't bother me. But like I said, if you go back and listen to these MOV releases, they sound fantastic. I think really the only knock I have against music on vinyl is how limited their releases are. And like I said, they're doing everything in-house, so I get why these are so limited. They don't really have the capacity to crank out, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 albums. So a lot of their bigger releases tend to only be, you know, 1,500 to 2,500 copies. So they tend to be kind of hard to find, especially here in the U.S. Everything's coming out of the Netherlands. So it takes a while to get over here. Uh, what I've what I've seen a lot of people online starting to do is pre-ordering these MOV releases from European sources. So they're a little bit more guaranteed to, to get these because here in the U.S. I'm seeing a lot of these MOV releases or people are pre-ordering them and they're just getting canceled because they just can't get the stock here. So I'm going to kind of go over some of my favorite MOV releases. I will say that as uh, you know, a teenager in the 90s, of course, I'm going to lean heavily towards the 90s with these uh, with these releases. And, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of the stuff that I've got that, that Music on Vinyl has released in the 90s, especially the later part of the 90s, none of that stuff was ever pressed on vinyl. So, you know, kudos to MOV for going out there, digging up some of these albums and pressing them. So the first one is an MOV release from 2020, and it's uh, I, don't, I have the standard black version. I didn't get the the super limited one. It's still available on Discogs if you go on there. I want to say the the limited one was limited to 2,000 copies. The black one you can still pick up in your local record stores today, but it's a Candlebox self-titled debut album. Just a great album. I've loved this album since it first came out. I actually had this. My brother had this on CD, and I think I'd go and steal it and listen to it every once in a while, but... Great album. This is one that uh, I just picked up probably within the last maybe six or eight months, maybe. And, uh, you know, I listen to it all the time. It sounds absolutely fantastic. Perfect, perfectly quiet, just like a lot of the MOV releases are, or most of them. I don't think I've had any of them that really have any kind of noise issues. But sounds great. And it, uh, like I said, these you can probably still find these in your local store. So with that Candlebox release, it was never available on vinyl was when it was first released. So it wasn't available until MOV pressed it in 2020. The next one 
it was available. It, it was pressed on vinyl in 1993 when it first came out, but no one was really buying records back then. So it wasn't really widely available until MOV pressed it in 2018. But it's a great album by Cracker called Kerosene Hat. This is the 25th anniversary release of it. You can see it's got the gold label on there. This is an expanded edition. This is not numbered. This is uh, there was. I don't know if they did a, a limited release of this one, but it's on black vinyl. It's got a couple of extra tracks that the original release didn't have, but uh, it's a fantastic 90s album. The next one is an MOV release back from 2014. Actually, I think they just made, might have reissued this within the last year because I started seeing these kind of pop up in stores more and more regularly. Well, this is just the standard black version of it. And that's uh, Korn's debut album. They did do a limited release of this. And I want to say it was like 700 copies or something like that. Some of the super limited is on uh, red and black vinyl. Looks actually pretty cool if you go on Discogs and look at, and check it out. And I want to say it's available on Discogs for probably about 100 bucks or so. But, um, you know, it's a, just a great album. This is one I just had to have in my collection. I'm not a huge Korn fan, but their first two albums are fantastic. So I was wrong. With that Korn release, it was limited to 2,500 copies. You know, still pretty limited, but not uh, super, super limited. Like this next one, this was the one that was limited to only 700 copies when the limited release first came out. I didn't buy that. I bought just the standard black one. Actually, I, I think this was my first MOV release I ever bought. But this one came out back in 2014. My, probably one of my favorite punk albums of the 90s, the Living End self-titled debut album. That's probably one of my most spun MOV releases. Absolutely love this album. From beginning to end, there's not a bad track on here. But uh, I, I'd like to grab that uh, that limited release maybe down the line. Like I said, last time I looked on Discogs, it was probably, I think it was 100 maybe 125 bucks, something like that. So it's probably a little bit out of my price range. At least I've got this one I can listen to. So like I said previously, MOV has done a great job with 90s releases, but they do more than just 90s releases. The next one is an album that came out back in the 80s. Great album. I think it's probably one of the most underrated albums of the uh, of the 1980s. This one, I think this is a 2018 MOV release, but it is Play Deep by the Outfield. They did do a limited release of this. It's on blue vinyl. I want to say it was 2,000, maybe 2,500 copies. But uh, this one, I didn't care what color it was. I just needed to have this one in my collection. The next album is one I've loved ever since it first came out. And uh, when MOV was announced that they were going to release this back in 2019, I knew I had to have a copy of it. Went to the record store on the day it was released and uh, was able to snag a copy. It wasn't super limited, though. I think it was 5,000 copies when it uh, was released. It looks really cool. It's on orange vinyl. But like I said, just a fantastic album. It's a freak show by Silverchair. Uh, here's the, I'll show you what the, the label is there. If you can read it in my camera there. Yeah, limited to 5,000 copies. And if you look on the back, this is copy. This is number 1,410. You can see it, uh, if I can get it in the camera there. It's kind of hard to see, but yeah, it's numbered right there on the back cover. Uh, you know, if you get one of the numbered MOV releases or limited MOV releases, they're always numbered like that. But it's just a great album. So if you're a Stone Toll Pilots fan, and all of you ever listened to is their first three albums, I think you're really missing out on something. MOV released uh, their fourth album back in 2015. The When it was released, uh, the limited release, I want to say it was 2,000 copies, it was on white vinyl, memory serves me correct. I got the, just the standard black one. Like I said, if you're missing out, if you haven't listened to number four, like I said, I think this might be Stone Toll Pilots' most complete album. The next one was just a great 90s album. And one that, uh, it wasn't a super limited release when it was released last year, but it seemed to be one of the hotter releases that MOV did last year. And uh, to be completely honest, when they announced this was was coming out, I forgot this album even existed. Even though I think I have it on CD, but it's been a really long time since I've listened to it. Probably 20 plus years since I've listened to the entire album. And when I got it and listened to it, I was really surprised how great this album is, actually. But uh, the album is Lemon Parade by Tonic. Uh, like I said, it wasn't super limited. Uh, this one's actually kind of picked up. Uh, it started popping up recently in my local record stores. But uh, like I said, if you're a 90s alternative fan and you haven't listened to this one in a while, make sure you go check it out. So the last two albums I'll do together. One was released at the end of last year. The second one was released at the very beginning part of this year. They're both fantastic albums. Uh, one was limited to 2,500 copies. The other one was limited to 2,000 copies. They're both kind of hard to find. I know a lot of people missed out on both of these releases, but uh, one of my favorite albums from uh, the 80s, one of my favorite albums of the early 90s. But uh, you got uh, Warrant's Dirty, Rotten, Filthy, Stinking Rich. This is the 35th anniversary copy. 
limited to 2,500 copies. This one, I don't think this one's actually numbered though. It is, but you can't, I won't show it on the camera, but uh, it's copy uh, 1,696. But the way it's printed and the colors on the back, you really can't see it on there. But uh, just a great album. This one, like I said, was kind of hard to find. Uh, this was released beginning part of this year. It's on uh, green vinyl, if, I, if my memory serves me correct. Yeah, it's on translucent green vinyl. It looks really cool. And the other one is Cherry Pie by Warrant. This was released, I think it was December uh, of last year. Limited to 2,000 copies. It's on uh, silver and black marble vinyl. Looks really cool. I actually gave away a copy of this on the channel here. But, uh, you know, 2,000 copies. It was definitely hard to find. I know a lot of people got the, their pre-orders canceled on this one. But just a fantastic album. Well, that's all I got for you today, guys. Thanks for checking the show out. Music on vinyl. Like I said, they've done a lot of great albums over the last uh, several years. Since, uh, actually, it's been it's 2023. So I guess 13 years now that they've been doing uh, vinyl releases, but uh, drop me a comment down below. Let me know what some of your favorite MOV releases are. Like I said, just a great, great label. I uh, really can't wait to see what they're going to release the rest of this year. I'm sure they got a bunch of great uh, albums coming out. Let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. And that's all I got. Until next time, keep on spinning. Peace. <laughs>